our Chihuahua adventures took us to Philadelphia on New Year's Eve. Just how friendly is the city of brotherly love? Good morning. We have the whole day to spend in Philadelphia. Kind of look around and see what kind of dog friendly places we can find. And there's this really cool place that I've actually been to before. It has all kinds of restaurants. I would compare it to Farmer's Market at the Grove in LA. It has all kinds of different types of food that you can order, but I don't know yet if they are dog friendly. So we're headed to the Reading Terminal Market and see if we can eat there. Are you hungry? When you come to something waiting to be free to do. So with Margot secure in her pouch, we entered the market. But the sign says no pets. I mean, what sign? So Margot fits snugly in the pouch and I wrapped my scarf around the front of it. Oops. So many options, I don't even know what to get. The Reading Terminal Market is amazing. We're just gonna have to eat our way through Philadelphia. The creperie looks like a great choice. They had both sweet and savory selections. Plus, it was fun to watch them being prepared. Breakfast and a show. I chose the eggs, cheese, and sausage combo. Kind of like a breakfast burrito, but in a crepe. James chose a Philadelphia cheesesteak crepe. It was really yummy and the crepes were really light. And Margot loved the Philly cheesesteak meat. This is one of the reasons why I love our little sweetie pies. They're small and compact. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. She loves riding in my pouch and meeting all the people. After our yummy breakfast, we decided to walk to the Liberty Bell in Independence Hall, about a mile. So behind the glass here is the Liberty Bell, but since it's not pet friendly, this is as close as we can get. Unfortunately, both Liberty Bell and Independence Hall allow service dogs only, no pets. What a shame. But most businesses were pet friendly, including most restaurants. Philadelphians generally loved Margot. People actually live in these houses that were built in the 1720s. I think this is one of the original streets and everything, the little pathways. And they all have these little firewood boxes where you can open and put the firewood. And I wonder if they still keep their houses with fire. It says, please respect our home. We learned that it's National Park Service policy to not allow pets in any public buildings they manage. So could we park here? Swift parking. That's us, right? Well, it was time to eat more food. Let's try some street food next. This vendor was the nicest person, as were the customers in line. Spicy hot dog? Yeah. We got Margot a regular hot dog. Margot loved her little pouch and loved her hot dog. She was very happy and content. Let's do a little sightseeing.
we decided to hire a horse carriage for a tour through Society Hill and the historic district. The horse was Louise, as in Thelma and Louise, and she was so gentle and a little bit curious about Margot. Louise also loved peppermint. Our cabbie was really knowledgeable and told us a lot about the colonial history of Society Hill and the old city. She also gave us a few tips on where to eat our next meal. I'm telling you, we literally ate our way through Philadelphia. She told us about the Bourse and the Premier Food Hall. Ooh, that would be our next stop. And so many gourmet food choices. So we are eating our way through Philadelphia. Right now we are at the Bourse, which is the first steel structure in the United States. It's the first skyscraper. It was built in 1895. And they have all kinds of yummy food here. And right now we're gonna try Korean tacos. Taqueria Tacos was next. A little unusual, a little fusion, but delicious. And Margo was happy. So we're gonna go check out the Carpenter Hall, which is not part of the National Park system. We're gonna see if Margo can go in. Carpenter's Hall was a little more relaxed about their pet policy. Let's see if pets are allowed in Carpenter Hall. We were able to walk right in with Margo and everyone was very nice. And now some desserts at Shane's Confectionery, dating back to the mid-1800s. Okay, Shane's Confectionery, okay, highly recommend it. So let's go check it out. And known for their hot chocolate recipes, perfect for a chilly winter day. We're at Penn's Landing and they have an ice skating rink, which I'm sure they don't have year round, but it's seasonal. And they have these cool little fire pits and they have these adorable little cabins that you can reserve. How fun is that? The evening wrapped up at Penn's Landing along the Delaware River. It's a fun local hangout still decorated with the holiday lights. So this cabin here looks like it's the skiers lodge. This one's the ice skaters lodge. Cabin number three is a big one and it looks like a hunter's lodge. Cabin number two is all decorated for Christmas. And here's the Philly Mag Cabin. Um, I don't know what that the cultural differences between East Coast and West Coast are subtle. Philadelphia loves pets, but it wasn't really universal. We did get a few strange looks. Maybe the fact that it was winter meant no outdoor dining like we have here in California year round. I guess if the outdoor dining was open, there'd probably be more pets allowed. But that's why we adore our little sweetie pies. They easily sneak into places that a Labrador could never go. And Margot absolutely loved it. <laughs> 